I started this industry selling final expense. Yes. My first year, I made it maybe maybe not a hundred thousand, but like the high nineties. Okay. Yeah. So my first dude, year. So I don't hear that a lot. Okay. This dude's in the hot seat. Made literally ninety something thousand dollars his first year as a final expense insurance agent. Most don't do that. Kudos to you. Well, I, I enjoy talking with people. I enjoy making friends. I enjoy. I just learned a lot of cool stuff from people along the way. Like I learned like whenever, and I still do it to this day. So if ever I see a client. All right, I got a power producer in house today, Mr. Ernest Mitchell, currently in Greenville, South Carolina. Dude, welcome to the studio. Thank you, glad to be here. Dude, you, you have phenomenal energy. Your wife, Lauren, is awesome as well. Both of our wives, Lauren, are both awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, that, that proves we're both really good salespeople because our wives are amazing. That's right. Right? That's right. Uh, well, we gotta mention them and gotta mention her. Um, I've always been impressed with you, hanging out with you, man, over these last like several weeks. You've come into Springfield twice now, right? Once for um, Business Expansion Workshop. Phenomenal. If anybody wants to go to that Business Expansion, if you want to grow your business, you got to go to this thing because there's so many things that we thought we knew, but we didn't know. Thanks, and man. I'm from accounting to taxing, taxes to lawyers. Yeah. Just It's just a phenomenal event. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff that, that you just don't know. Like a lot of insurance agents are business owners. Mm -hmm. Even though they don't even realize it, mm -hmm. they're a business owner. You know, talk about that for a second because you're you're um, you're a business owner, but there's things that like you don't know along the way, right? And so, what can you like help a new agent with if you look back and say, "Man, I wish I'd have known some of these things as I was like running a business." I think um, transitioning from being a 1099 to getting incorporated that's a big deal you know yep. getting it's a, it's a hassle but you're you're double taxing yourself and i think also when you get into the point of you're making good money i was talking to you i, I started this industry selling final expense yes my first year i made it maybe maybe not a hundred thousand but like the high 90s okay yeah so my first dude, year so i don't hear that a lot okay this dude's in the hot seat made literally 90 something thousand dollars his first year as a final expense insurance agent most don't do that. Kudos to you. Well, I, I enjoy talking with people. Yeah. I enjoy making friends. I enjoy, I just learned a lot of cool stuff from people along the way. Like I learned like whenever, and I still do it to this day. So if ever I see a client, I always make sure I always give them a hug. If it's a woman, awesome. you know, I give there them a go. good, good, nice handshake if it's a man. Yeah. Yep. But um, just just taking the time to show them that I care while, that, while I'm also helping them and trying to add value. So important. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, okay, so 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 first year, ninety something thousand dollars final expense agent. Mm -hmm. um, I know you're you you've pivoted. How mm -hmm. how long have you been in the industry? I've been independent in the industry for about ten years. Okay. Yeah. And then you pivoted to Medicare about six years ago or so. That's right. Um, yeah. why, why the change? Right. Final expense. Mm -hmm. Medicare now. We're, we're talking about this off camera. So yeah. Um, I, I, I was looking at how many applications I wrote with this one carrier. It was Forrester's, and I had 431 clients, and wow. my um, renewals were like $1,600 a month. And I had talked to someone that was in Medicare, and they were telling me what my renewals would have been if they were Medicare. If you'd have wrote all 431 or whatever. Yeah, if I'd just Medicare. been focused on that. And, yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, when we made that pivot, it, it enabled us to do some cool things down the road. So. We actually were able to, I was actually able to take my family to Puerto Rico for six months. That's awesome. And just enjoy the experience of living on the water and living on the beach. How and cool it, is that? It was cool. It was cool. Yeah. I would love to eventually own a home down there or something, man. That's it's cheap. Awesome. It's, I mean, you can get some good, I mean, not everything's cheap, but you can get some good property down there. That's crazy. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Okay. So, 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 so that allowed some extra freedom. Yeah. Allowed you to create some residual income, right? Mm -hmm. Find some... Um, additional opportunities to kind of grow something. Sure. Um, and then, really, now you're you're really trying to help others have the success that you've had. Yeah. So you know, my bills are covered. So yeah. I, uh, me and my wife, we work together. We're a husband and wife team, just like you guys. Power which is crazy. Couple, yeah, that's crazy, man. right? You are um, cool, by the way. But it's cool because you know I have young kids. So my wife, she primarily works from nine to two. Um, we ha um, we just recently invested in an office downtown in Greenville, um, in, in our Simpsonville area. Congrats! And um, it also enables my wife to be able to have the freedom to hand, um, be mom, CEO yeah. mom from two on. You know, both my kids are doing two activities a week. That's you okay. know, so that's four activities a week. So we're all, we're a busy family. Yes. Um, 
and uh, you know we're, we're we're also able to grow. You know, yeah. um, we were going to get an office last year, but the pandemic hit. So I feel like mm. just like a lot of people, I kind of took my foot off the gas a little bit. Yeah, and the, you know having residual incomes can be a gift and a curse. For sure. Because you know that you have that money coming in, but you also have the ability to sit back and say, hey, you know what, maybe I don't want to get the corona or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. for sure. Good for you, man. Um, well, okay, so let's let's fast forward now. Like, like what, what, what are you, like if when you're looking for an agent to help, mm -hmm. what are you looking for? Well, uh, I'll, I'll help anybody that, that's willing to put in the work. Um, I think you have to want to... You have to have a why. Yep. You have to either want to be able to have a lifestyle, yes. want to be able to provide for your family. There has to be something. Um, me and Lauren are born teachers. We love teaching people. We, If you look at any of our videos on YouTube, you can see that we don't have a lot, but we're getting more up. We're trying to stay consistent like, you, like you, you, know, you talked about. But um, we, we understand Medicare. So we understand, yep. you know, no matter what that client's going through, whether they are having prescription problems, they're looking for durable medical equipment. They yeah. are um, aging into Medicare, which is a which is a great way to earn a client for life. The person that's turning yes. 65. Yes. We love to take the time to sit there and explain the process to them. They can ask as many questions as they want. That's awesome. We will sit there on the phone with them. Um, we've done a lot of Zoom calls this year. We want them to be super comfortable. A lot of times we call people Miss Betty or Miss Miss right. Miss Judy. You that's know, right. we just we, right. it's that Southern hospitality thing, but. We um, um, and we we like to teach people that that to that same process to duplicate that. Yes. So. Yes, that's cool, man. I love that. Um, what have you? Okay, so I want to. You're you're an athlete. Oh yeah. Uh, still an athlete too. Uh, we haven't got you on the tennis bit. court, but you would destroy me, so I shouldn't probably, right? <laughs> but I heard about pickleball, so I brought my shoes. So I'm supposed to be Did playing. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Your dad told me. So. Oh, yeah, good, so. man. Yeah, I love some pickleball. Yeah. Um, so. I've always found that athletes, ex-athletes, either way, are more successful business owners, entrepreneurs, and salespeople. Have you noticed the same thing? It, I mean, a lot of athletes are in my circle. So yeah, the yeah. one thing about being an athlete is it does teach you how to just focus on the target. Yes. Um, also, playing tennis, I it was kind of it was an advantage for me because it enabled me. As tennis players, we yeah. weren't able, we didn't really rely on anybody. So mm. when we're out in the field, it was me and that client. Right. And I had to find a solution in order to get a client. You can't, you know, you can have some charm and you can yeah. do some good small talk. But if you can't solve their problem, That's there's right. a reason that they set the appointment with you. Yes. You're not going to get that client. Yes. So. so tennis players make the best insurance agents. There's our title. Uh, that's, that's arguable, but I don't know. <laughs> I mean, um, well, you've been really successful. But you're a basketball so. player too, so we, yeah. we had talked about shooting yeah. to seeing who could uh, still um, get the shots up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. Know. I don't know. We may have to get on the court at some point. We might. I don't did, know. Did you played. I well, I come from a bat. Yes, I played. My brother yeah. played in in college, but okay. Technically, he's never beaten me. Oh, so, all right. What's yeah, your brother's he, name? Yeah, his, his name's Mason, but he would. I'm sure he would not agree with that. So. God, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna make sure Mason watches this now. <laughs> Um, again, for those, those that are watching, okay, because I want you guys to better look this guy up and follow him. Really cool dude. And his wife, Ernest and Lauren Mitchell in South Carolina. Um, they're even coming into this SIG, Secure Insurance Group family. That's right. They're going to spend the next few days here for the main event. He'll be on the Q&A panel actually sharing with other agents from stage, which I'm sure you're excited about. I am. Dude, Always, man. You're gonna yeah. you're, he's going to drop the mic. Okay? He's going to do good. <laughs> um, I, 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 I love your energy. Well, thank you. Has it? I like I, yours too, man. Thanks, man. Dude, well, yeah, we have so much fun when we're together, right? <laughs> that's right. Crazy. That's right. Uh, where's that come from? Has it always been that way for you? I think so. I think so. I've always uh, been enthusiastic. Um, it's it's just it's kind of natural for me. Um, yeah. It's um, my wife always reminds me: make sure you you just be who you are, show your energy, you know, just, you know, and um, it's it's a it's a better way to be for me. You know, everybody's yeah. different. Um, and right. I, I like I like being around people that are high energy and sure. have a zest for life and yeah um, yeah that's one thing I've always seen with you too Cody thank you, you. Know, appreciate um, that 
How, how important is positivity? Staying positive in this tough, oh, man. tough and, insurance and, oh, world. Oh, you know what? Uh, okay, so let me tell you about this positivity thing. So <laughs> I am naturally positive, but I still have times where I, I have doubt and, and frustration. Me too. And I have to. So what I do is I go back to the, the YouTube videos or, yeah. or I go back through my notes and I read back through some of the, the victories that I've had and some of the things mm. that I've dealt with. Um, just just recently, you have to sometimes remind yourself who you are, yeah, that's where right. you come from. That's right. Mm. Do you so tell me a time where you had self doubt? Because I don't ever see that from you. I yet. like this. <laughs> this is good, by the way. That's smart. Uh, you guys are curious too? Um, well, okay. So so I've got a recent example. Mm-hmm. I haven't shared this on video yet, but okay. Ernest asked, so I'm going to do it. Okay. <laughs> this dude's a good interviewer already too. He's good at inter- get, doing the interview and interviewing. Um, in January, I put in my notes that there was a specific plane that I wanted, preferred plane, my preferred plane. Mm-hmm. It's a Cessna 414. Mm-hmm. A really wealthy gentleman that has a bigger plane is like, no, nah, you don't want that plane. You want my plane, you know. He created some doubt in my mind. And I'm like, man, maybe he's right. Maybe I'm not ready. Maybe it's not the right time. Whatever, right? So we go four months. I see another gentleman speak at this conference in Austin this past weekend that I was at. He speaks right after me. He owns a plane. I go see him. Guess what plane he owns? Cessna 414. Okay. The exact plane I told myself I need to own. Mm-hmm. We talked for a while. Long story short, we talked for a while. I tell Andy, I'm buying that plane. Saturday night on the way back, we're in the Dallas airport. I'm looking at planes. I call someone that owns this plane in Oklahoma. I find the plane I want. They already have it committed to somebody else. We already committed to a client, so you can't have it. I follow up anyway. 72 hours, calls, texts, emails, hard. Long story short, I literally here yesterday morning. You got the plane. I got the plane. <laughs> That's awesome. I've been writing that down. Mm-hmm. Literally, I've got a goal book right sitting right there, my old OG goal book from sure. 2017, saying I will own a private airplane. And however, there's been plenty of doubt along the way that did not think I would buy it at 30. That's why I've been trying to figure it out this year because I turned 31 in July. Mm-hmm. I wanted to own it when I was 30. Now when I was 31. January, I had doubt. Today, you no, own the plane. I own the plane. So have you flown the plane? No, no, no. I'm going Saturday. <laughs> I'm going Saturday. Yeah. No joke. It's funny. It's, you didn't even know this. This no, is brand no. new, by the yeah, way. Yeah. Breaking news. <laughs> I'm literally sitting here. Let's actually make, make another good video, by the way. Um, I'm literally Saturday going to Oklahoma to see it verify it and then we're doing a pre-buy inspection early next week sure. and then closing next couple weeks so when you own a plane let's because let's, maybe i need to make a this let's a dream of mine yeah. so when you yeah. own a plane um you're not ready to fly the plane yet are no. you so so no. you have to get a pilot correct to, how does that work well i'm actually interviewing several pilots right now and okay. you will pay them per day okay if they're lower hours like 1500 hours mm-hmm. you'll pay them like 350 a day for the day mm-hmm or if they're higher hours, like there's one guy locally that actually does all the check rides and training and he teaches at college, he has 16,000 hours, a mm-hmm. lot in this type of plane too. He's like, you know, 500 a day. Okay. So then you pay, the way it works is you pay for the plane, you buy the plane, mm-hmm. then you pay for monthly expenses, right? So, so maybe you have a loan on the plane, um, insurance, hangar, and you even pay per month for the future annual inspection. So you, so you have months, so you have fixed cost. That's what's mm-hmm. called fixed cost. And you have variable cost. Those are costs when you actually go fly the plane. And those are hourly costs to use the plane, right? Oh. So fuel, mm-hmm. oil, um, you put away future money for when you need to overhaul the propellers. You put away future money to do an engine overhaul in the future because engine overhauls on this plane that I got are $40,000 per engine because these are multi-engine plane, seven-seater, pressurized cabin. Now you see I'm really getting excited. <laughs> um, so then you got money for that, and you got money for general maintenance, right? I mean, yeah. I may be missing something, but I don't think so. So then you have an hourly cost to use the plane. Then you have a per-day cost for the pilot. So once you own the plane and you're paying for monthly expenses, it's just, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to Dallas. It takes me two hours to get there. Mm-hmm. That's hourly cost times two, hourly cost times two on the way back, plus however many days I use the pilot. But as much as you travel, though, I can yeah. see the, you know, and you're right, you're writing it off. So, Correct. I mean, it's not like you're just throwing that money away. So no. I can see the benefit of that for you. Yes, and it's a lot yeah. more affordable than people think. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I'm taking three team members and we're traveling in fours, sure, I love to fly first class when I can, but when I'm taking four people on, on, on American Airlines to, to Dallas and back for the day or two days or whatever, there's no doubt that's going to already cost me two or three grand. 
Yeah. I may be able to actually get have my own plane and go and a pilot for only two or three grand. Okay. Okay. So it's actually the math starts to work out better than people think. So, yeah. Well, you, the plane I flew on is probably the size of your plane. It, yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> a little American Eagle <laughs> yeah. plane, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, but did it you had, fly from Charlotte or where did you fly I, from? I flew from uh, Chicago, but we had like, okay. they stuck like 60 people on there. And I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It was tight. One seat and then two seats? I'm not complaining. You guys took care of the ticket. So, you oh, know, good. Yeah, Thanks, yeah, buddy. Yeah. Cool, man. So yeah. I appreciate you guys. You got um, it. Thank you. Um, but that's really interesting. Um, I think I'm more of a boat guy, though. Okay. Yeah, so. Like a yacht? Or what kind of boat are we talking about? Uh, well, you know, like you're interested in planes. Yes. Like when I'm at home, me and my wife, we watch those YouTube videos where people are like sailing like catamarans and stuff around oh, the world. yeah. So that's kind of interesting to us. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Good for you. So that's. Uh, how important is it that both parties, in, both spouses mm-hmm. are on the same page? Running oh, it's, business? It's, it's super important because, um, number one, I'm sure you're the same way, is you, you don't trust anybody else more than your wife. Totally. So, 100%. you know, my wife um, is always going to have my back. She's going to see something that I don't see possible. They've all got, they've got like this sixth and seventh sense, by yeah. the way, too. Like they see stuff and notice stuff that we don't even see. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and they know how to read people that we don't know how to read. Yes. So we, um, we, d- we're, we, just, we did a first interview with, a, with a, yeah. a, a young lady that wants to come aboard, and we're doing the second interview. Went over our core values, like we talked about oh. in the business expansion, expansion meeting. And, you know, um, so my wife's going to be interviewing with her tomorrow. I don't yep. need to. I was there the first time. Good. Um, but um, one of the things that, that um, wives and husbands have is um, it, it, gives, it gives you also the opportunity to grow a business together. Yep. So I believe in this business. So my wife has had opportunities to take other jobs, but I'm not letting them pay her for what she's she, impressive she's, too, she, man. she's yes. more valuable to our yes. business than she is for other exactly other people so tons of, it's so funny you mentioned that because so many yeah. people are like dude I, your, your wife's everybody's wanting to hire my wife all the time and i'm like she she you know she's working we're working together that's right you know that's right and so that's that's really smart by the way um also you take vacations together yeah exactly so, so exactly so like if we want to like uh take a couple months off and let this the new person that we're hiring i don't want to say yeah. her name yet because i don't know if i'm hiring yet but um okay. um man the shop we go yeah. we go we that's don't right. think about it and that's um right. That's the beauty of um, owning your own business. And everybody needs to get to that point where they're not, they're not a slave to their own company. You know, Tony Robbins had a good statement about this. Okay. He goes, I don't care how much you get paid. If you have to work, if you have to physically work, that's a job. Yes. But if you can create your business to where that's it can good. be managed and worked by other people, then that's a business. That's good. And that's what I've always wanted. I want a business. Most people say that, most, or a lot of people are saying that, that if, your, if your business is a, feels like a prison, mm-hmm. you're doing it wrong. Yeah. And there's a lot yeah. of times where, yeah. for me, previously, mm-hmm. I remember when it was. You know? Well, you know, we were just talking about that in the office of the day. So we, we had we had to step it up. So we ordered a bunch of, uh, like, uh, there's this, you know, different things to put around the office with some of our favorite cool, sayings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just to make it a little bit more. Do you see the core values in the back, by the way? I think I did when I first came yeah, here. Yeah yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. And that's and stuff like that. Yeah. That's exactly. very important. And it was really cool when we got to interviews, because we've never done this before, so we're interviewing yeah. someone, we're going over our core values, they're seeing that we have standards. They're right. saying, they're saying, well, this is, no one's ever done that before. Oh, mm. it's separating ourselves from these other businesses. They're just like, okay. So you can already tell. High. Oh, I can tell, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, core values, wow, these people, okay, all right. That's let me, huge, let me sit up a little bit more straight. Let exactly. me, yeah, okay. This this, this this is doable. This Ernest yeah. kid, dude, this Lauren cat, they 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 got their stuff figured out, you know. Well, we, That's we try, cool. you know. You, yeah, yeah. We're, we're all evolving, <laughs> That's you right. know. Yeah. Uh, so I want to give you a wristband, okay? So we just got these in today. Okay. No jab, no no lie, okay. Eight percent, and then accept responsibility, okay? mm. which I just put it on. Okay. So I uh, give yeah, you I got mine too. Yeah. Okay. Nice. They literally just hot off the press, sort of. They literally the box just came in like an hour ago, so I'm yeah. been passing them out. So if the, something doesn't work, it's my fault. There you go. That's right. Okay, talk about that, because how freaking important is that concept? Super important. I, I've heard it before. You know, a lot of these concepts that even you bring up, we've all heard before. Yes. And but you can forget them. Yes. And and quickly. That, that's why it's good to have a journal sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to get you a CA journal, by the way. We got some new CA goals journals, nice. by the way, too. Yeah. Um, 
um, I was listening to Inky talk to somebody. Uh, I was working out and I was listening to him, and they were just talking about consistency. Yes. And doing what you. And then I was also listening to Ed Milet. I'm. I'm. I'm I try to listen as much dude. as I could. And and this is something I haven't done is yeah. where he breaks his days down to three days. Have you heard that? No. So he does. So so he tries to do three days in one. So I think he said he does his first day is from six to twelve, then twelve to six, then six to twelve. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. But but sleep in six less than six hours. I'll, I'll be really cranky the <laughs> first part, something like that. The first day of the three. I don't know. But um, consistency. That that's yeah. that's something that I think we we all struggle with. Like, and, but yes. if you can break it down, and um, for me, break it down to like hour, take yep. hour, do some push ups, take a break, right. and then you know another hour, stuff like that. Yeah. That, that helps. I want to ask a question because I think a lot of people will relate to this, and we've both been through it. Mm-hmm. When you get in a slump, mm. or you're complacent, or you're not freaking pushing like you know you should, mm-hmm. or you're just content, you got a good residual income like we talk about with Medicare, sure, and sure, you're just sure. like, you know what, I don't have to do anything. How do you get? How did you get out of it? Mm-hmm. Because I've been in it too. Most sure. people never think that, but it happens to everybody, right? Mm-hmm. How do you get out of it? You gotta do something. So I, yeah. I was just funny. I was just talking to someone about this the other day. Okay. So I was explaining that I was in a slump, and it wasn't. It was a slump to where I just didn't want to do anything. I was just like, yeah. oh my god, I just want to just. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to pick up that dial. So what I did was I just went went, went and worked out, went to the gym, um. put one foot in front of the other, and just did that because I knew I could do that. I knew I, that would take my mind off of it. Then it made yeah. it easier for me to go back and get on the phones again and, and do what I needed to That's do. Cool. So um, I think that it's um, not staying stagnant. Yes. Just you got to do something. Yes. So if you don't want to do that, maybe you don't need to do it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do something um, and, and push yourself. Yeah. Because when, when I was pushing myself, I got my juices going again and it exactly. made it a lot easier. Yeah, we back. all have that a little bit of a competitive desire mm-hmm. that we need to ignite every now and then, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, my wife and I talk about this a lot. I don't, we don't, other than going to church and spending a little bit of time with family, um, we don't love weekends and Sundays. Really? Because I get so freaking bored. Mm. I get so bored. And then I feel like I'm being lazy. Or I'm, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's tough for me to just like, I can sit for like a couple hours and watch some TV or a show or billions or something, you know? <laughs> um, but to sit for like, a whole day is like really tough. So we try to find stuff to do to keep us busy. You know, so I'm going to say something. So how right. many, this is the craziest thing. All a lot of the successful guys that I know watch billions. I've watched a couple episodes, but I think I need to watch a lot more now. You do. Cuz you guys are all on that show. Dude, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Everybody wants to be the ethical version of Bobby Axelrod. Okay. You know. Okay. Um it's it just it gets my brain moving about business and thinking and like I mean, it's kind of crazy. I like a lot of like uh, cartel shows too, like Narcos. Mm -hmm. Like I love these kind of shows because I'm just like, okay, how could I do what they're doing ethically, Mm -hmm. not literally selling drugs, right? Not literally um, doing whatever whatever the terminology is for the stock market, right? Mm -hmm. But I just like seeing people operate in, 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 in a business setting and I'm watching and learning. Like, okay, how did he handle that? Ooh, would I have thought about asking that question there? Like that kind of stuff. Like, sure. like I love watching speakers on stage. Sure. Because, and, or even even at church. Yeah. Like literally, got, uh, 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 we had a, a guest pastor come in a week and a half ago at church, two Sundays ago, and he was really good at telling stories. Mm. And I'm like, I don't even know if he prepped any content, but he, he but he kept me engaged better than any pastor has in a long time, and I didn't even know who he was. And I also, like a lot of people, I'm sitting there like, yeah, this is going to be boring. I'm not, like, that's not the main faster. Oh, here we go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unfortunately, but he kept my attention. Check this out. So we went to church this last Sunday. Okay. And guess what the message was? What's that? It was your message, and it was don't quit. Oh. This was, and this was one of the things that you said, and this was this is also something that I would say to new new agents out there. Don't quit because if you yeah. keep going, you're gonna you're going to be able to provide an amazing life in this business, this business right here that's right. for your family and for your loved ones. That's but right. that's what the message is about, um, man. You're gonna if I try to give you a Bible verse on it right now, I, I'm, I'm gonna mess it up. Yeah. But it was don't quit, 
And um, how important is that message? Like, because we have we do the virtual conference. If you don't if you don't quit, you can't fail. Yeah, uh, yeah. I remember you. I remember listening to it from you as well before I even. Yeah. So what was it like about a couple years now? That's that's been one yeah, of your yeah, slogans. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 20, 2020 and twenty twenty one. Because it's true, man. Like, um, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that aren't as cool and talented as Ernest Mitchell. Oh man, stop okay? it. Stop it. That stop I'm gonna it, fill his head. I'm gonna make his head real big. Today. You're not feeling my head. <laughs> But, um, but they quit too soon. Yeah, well, you know, if you don't quit, you're going to get smarter. You're going to, and, and, you know, another thing is if you make a messed up appointment, guess what you do? You you analyze your appointment. So Correct. when you go back, you can, um, you know, say, okay, I, I'll do this better next time. That's right. On the next appointment. That's right. Um, but if you don't quit, you stay in it, you're going to constantly start separating and catching some of these other guys that are killing it. Yes. And that's, yeah, man. Boom. Yeah. Mike. How do they? How do they? How do they? Uh, how do they follow you? Like if they're like, dude, I like this Ernest dude. He's a cool guy, and he is. Um, <laughs> they can they can look you up on Facebook. Yeah, so Facebook. Uh, I do have an Instagram. Um, you know, I'm not. I don't know. Super I'm, active on Instagram. I'm not. Could they not. email you? Yeah, yeah. What's so, your email? Yeah, so you can email me at Ernest at DearRetirement.com. Okay. Or Ernest at MitchellBrokerage.com. Okay. Mm-hmm. Dear. Retirement, like like uh, D E A R. Yeah, D E A R. So and Ernest is E R N E S T. That's right. No yeah. A. I yeah. don't know. No. Does anybody ever spell it E A R N E S T? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I still it, I'll still get it because I have clients that were constantly spelling it E A R. So I, I had to add that. Yeah. So E R N E S T. But it is E R N E S T. Yeah. Retirement. Dot mm-hmm. com. Mm-hmm. Boom. Okay. Uh, last last. Uh, what what is there anything else you want to leave us with? Before we end the interview today, how good has this guy been, by the way? This has been good, man. You're better than you know on video and speaking. Well, I don't. Feel, I, don't I feel like I'm just trying to be myself. Shout out. So, but you know, it's it's. He's it's, obviously very humble too. <laughs> you're high energy, man, and and, Thanks, and um, but but you, you know, you're the type of person that brings out the best in people. And Thank that, you. That's really cool. Appreciate that. Um, how would I end this? Um, you know, if if you want to be good in this business, you have to surround yourself with other people that are good. Mm. You really do. Um, it's um, so go surround yourself with this cat. Okay, seriously. You really do, and and it, it takes a team. Yeah. You know, um, and and that's why you know we're, we decided to go ahead and partner up with Secure nice, and your yeah. dad. That's awesome. Um, and um, you know, we're just excited about what's what's happening in the future. So, dude. A lot of lot of bright things going on. Our 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 um, families are going to be you know working together for many years, and it's going to be a ton of fun. Um, mm-hmm. I've loved getting to sit. We literally sat that first night at the BW mm-hmm. and and just talked. chopped it up. Yeah, we just chopped for it up hours. and just talked and talked and, and drank Camus, and I loved it. <laughs> that is a wine that is an expensive wine that I'm only going to drink if you pay for it. Okay, <laughs> I, I need to get you a bottle tonight then. Okay. Yeah. It was awesome. No, man. it was awesome. Bro. Reach out to this dude, okay? Follow him. Tell him how amazing he did today, okay? Because he hasn't done a lot of this, but I'm telling you, he's a special dude, and so are you. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Well, I quote probably close to two million dollars in trucking insurance every month. Yeah. Close to two million trucking a month. Just you're trucking. quoting. Yeah. I granted that's extremely high for anybody who knows trucking. Which don't start in trucking. Get your feet wet with the personal lines, and then when you're ready for trucking, you.